I want to start off this moment um, with two things. First, I want to let y'all look at me. And you're looking at the host of the Lady McKee Wright show. I'm going to have my own radio show starting every Thursday in April at 8 o'clock p.m. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to the Lady Nakia Wright Show, Life Reimagined. Yay. Now, obviously, I am not Lady Nakia Wright. Uh, however, uh, Lady Nakia Wright is off on assignment tonight. So, Laura and I are here to get things going. We are stepping in and doing the thing. Uh, first, before we get started, uh, first, as always, Lady Nakia Wright, thank you so much uh, for trusting us with this. Uh, we appreciate you, and we hope you are somewhere doing what you do best, being God's choice. So, thank you so much for giving us uh, this platform to, to just kind of be us so thank you <laughs> um so like i said for those of you who don't know my name is charmonique bynum and this is laura scott and we are look we are the the dynamic duo uh, <laughs> one to twin powers activate yeah that was weird i don't know i didn't like it i didn't like the way it felt it just <laughs> It felt like some Thundercat, uh, <laughs> Captain Planet type stuff. I don't know. I didn't like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> look, we've got a great show in store for you tonight. Um, we have a guest artist who is going to, look, I want y'all, look, I need y'all to stay tuned, okay? Because at the end of the, at the, end of the show, she is going to come with her spoken word, her poetry, and she's going she's gonna to take us right on in. Um, and then one of the other things is, we just have we always like to leave you with some sort of uh, information so we've got some some summertime fun for you yes. we've got some summer events for you uh, something everybody can do kids family like whatever it is we've got you covered tonight all right so uh Lori, you want to say anything before we get started so well, I guess not. There we go. See, this is what happens. <laughs> this is what happens when you lie. <laughs> Laura just pointed to the paper and was like, uh-uh, stick to that. <laughs> don't stray. <laughs> don't, don't, don't lose focus. <laughs> so what we're going to do tonight is um, the first thing is we're going to promote the life of books. Look, the life of books is something that Lady Nakia Wright came up with. And we it's basically very simple. It's just girlfriends sitting around a fire talking about the latest read. Um, and this month is going to be no different. Well, I should say next month. Next month, June. June 8th is going to be no different. Um, we have The Bomb Life by Claire Somers. Now, um, this one is, she is the editor-in-chief and founder of FashionBombDaily.com. Now, I have not yet opened up this book, but the way I've heard the ladies talk about it, uh, it's going to be a great read, and I am looking forward to diving in. So get ready and join us. Get your book and join us on June 8th. At 10 a.m. Look, you still got time to get this book. I bought this book uh, a few days ago, and it, Amazon Prime came next day. So look, get your book. Um, the, the great thing about the life of books is it is just girlfriends sitting around. There, there's nobody there to judge you. There's nobody there um, to make you feel like your opinion isn't valid. Everyone's opinion matters. Every Come on here Laura everyone opinion matters like like this is so all we do is we come together we read we talk we might laugh a little bit here lately we've cried a little bit I, I cry a little more than I would like but <laughs> uh, whatever the case may be uh, we just sit back and go over our read and you can join us here's the thing even though you may not physically be present like the here's the thing the internet has made it so you don't have to be there you don't have to be there to feel a part of. 
That's look, that's the great thing about social media. They have made it so you can be right there. So join us. Please get this book. Please get this book and join us on June 8th. It's going to be a great time. We've got some great things in store this year and we would love for you to be a part of it. Yes. One of our other um added events is being a guest blogger on A Woman's Voice Matters. Yes, yeah, so if you would like to have a blog considered to be published on a Woman's Voice Matters uh, page, submit it to info at a woman's voice matters dot net. I'll yes. say that again. Info at a woman's voice matters dot net. And join us. You know, we're going to take a little uh, time exploring the world and other people's lives and other people's opinions and visions and dreams. All sorts of good stuff. Um, our first guest blogger was Miss Jocelyn Lay. None other. None other. A wonderful time she had in Cuba, and she shared her experiences with us. I was mad that she didn't take me with her. She didn't even ask if I wanted to be a part of. Look, I like to travel. That? I like to travel. I'm working on getting my passport. Like, it's not too late. I could have I could have got in. You don't know me. I got away with words. I could have got in, Jocelyn. Don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, look, look, like Laura said, join us on the journey Look, a woman's voice matters is nothing if you don't share in it with us. Yes. We do this for the sense of and the sake of community. So everyone feels like their voice can be heard. So it's not just my voice and it's not just Laura's voice and Elder Diane's voice. It's all of our collective voices that come about to make a difference, to make change. Yes. That's the only way that's the only way to do it when we come together to make change with one look. The Bible says this, and I'm not going. I'm not going to do this to y'all tonight. But the Bible says this. She's, sne she's sneaking to preach. <laughs> sneaking to preach. When they were all in one place on one accord, that's when something happened, and so that is a woman's voice matters with everybody together on, with one thing in mind, and that is to be an answer in the earth. Man, you know what kind of change we can see. And that's exactly what happens. You know, our shared experiences allow us exactly. to learn from one another's experience. Uh, what other people have experienced so we can all grow. Exactly. So, um, so Laura, tell us a little bit about what's happening this show and take a look. When we'll take a quick commercial break and we'll get right into it. So we're going to, we, we have a little fun to start off the show. Uh, social media has become a part of everyone's life. So we're going to take a little fun break with a social media, uh, Challenge. Challenge. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and then, of course, we have, as Miss Charmonique said, the phenomenal wordsmith extraordinaire, Miss Tiana Bruce, coming up live and in person. That's right. So we'll see you in a few. All right. So we're going to take a quick. I want to start off this moment um, with two things. First, I want to let y'all look at me. And you're looking at the host of the Lady McKee right show. I'm going to have my own radio show starting every Thursday in April at 8 o'clock p.m. Yeah. Welcome back. Yes, welcome back. So everybody knows that social media has been a buzz with this new I'm this old challenge. And that's what I'm calling it, the I'm this old challenge <laughs> that has kind of taken everybody down a little stroll down memory lane. So I thought it was kind of fun. You know, I don't know how Charmy felt about it. I look, I was not. I look, I have steered clear of this challenge on purpose. I don't need nobody to know how old I am, but we're gonna do. We're gonna give it a try anyway. <laughs> so we've looked through quite a few of them, or I have looked through quite a few of them over the last what, week or two. Yeah. And uh, my contribution, I finally gave in. My contribution was, I am back to school boogie. Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers. People's drugs still old. Ooh, um, 
So Shop. I don't know nothing about none of that. I don't, e- <laughs> I don't even know what people's is. <laughs> you really don't? No, but I'm it not. It was the predecessor to CVS. Yeah, but see, I'm not from here either. True, true. So that was probably back, you know, in your heyday. <laughs> My heyday has yet to begin. <laughs> Let me tell you, we got a lot coming. Ha, ha, ha. Heyday is not over. <laughs> I don't even call it heyday. <laughs> like, what does that even mean? <laughs> but I'm not gonna get distracted. Um, so I, I I'll, I'll go with this. Um, I am slouch socks with a rubber band around your jean. Old. Come on, eighties baby. 80s baby. Representing. Look, I used to wear them jeans faithfully, and you put like a rubber band up. So, it, like the little bottom piece, the little cuff can just be out at the bottom. Oh, oh, don't play with it. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I just, I did want to say this. Shout out to the godfather of Go Go. So, Chuck Brown, today, six years today since he left. Really? Him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I heard that earlier today. Wow. So yeah, shout but, out. You know, you, you, did you notice I said it wasn't just Chuck Brown; it was Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers. Yeah, I, I heard that, and I was like, "Hmm, who is that?" But not the Chuck Brown piece, but the other side of that. I was like, "I don't know who that is." The only Soul Searcher I know is. Oh Ju- no, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Sneaking to preach. <laughs> All right, what's up next, Lord? Give me another one. Give me another one. Let's see. Oh, this was one that I thought was funny. Uh, I don't know if you won't remember this one. Probably. Super TV. I'm super TV old. Super TV. You you guys remember Super TV over there? They don't know either. No, See? nobody knows Super no. TV. What is super Come on TV? now. Super TV was kind of like uh, the first Netflix. It was a oh. paid program that allowed you to have extra TV. And this was, yes, probably back in the very, very, very early 80s maybe oh yeah no 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 i don't know nothing about that uh so anytime i got extra channels it's because i turned the rabbit ears and you know bend them down a little bit and then you turn the top knob and the bottom knob and see if you could get just one good clear picture now that see i could have used that i could have used that right i'm rabbit i'm rabbit ears old <laughs> so my next one is i am a rotary phone old Rotary phone. Now, let me tell you. Okay. So, I went to an escape room about maybe three months ago. Mm-hmm. I'm in there with these young kids, young college kids. They couldn't have been no more than 19, 20. And they going around because they was talking about how smart they was and how, what, you know, classes they was taking. You can hear them talk about it. Mm-hmm. These babies got in here and they was like, what is this? I was like, it's a phone. <laughs> How do you use it? Look, can you do that part? Yep, I sure can. It was a rotary phone. Her old lady contribution. It was a rotary phone. <laughs> Them babies, <laughs> as smart as they was, they could not figure out how to use that phone. It, it was sad. It was a sad day. Yeah, yeah. That's the, probably the only time I have felt old is when I went in there with these little kids. <laughs> and they could not work that rotary phone. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, look, we the only the only reason we decided to even do this is look, cause this is look, this is what is happening on social media, and we thought it would just bring a little enlightenment or laughter to uh, to just one of our viewers. You know what I mean? Look, you probably got my dad watching one of our mothers, and my dad, I would love for you to text me and tell me what yours is, and that, I will post that. Let me tell you, I'm using that. How about all of our viewers out there on social media land, if you're watching, put in the comments, how old are you? There we go. Good one, Laura, good one. <laughs> So, please, help us out, Laura. What's up? So, you know, although we love social media, it is a great tool, Mm -hmm. you know. We want to still encourage people to get out and actually live real life. Please. So, one of the things we decided we wanted to share, because coming up with the summer, you know, even though springtime is acting like Papa Mole. Yeah. Pops out the ground every once in a while. Exactly. Can't figure it out. Don't know what it wants to do. Doesn't know what it wants to do, but summer is coming up very soon. The kids will be out of school. People will have a little extra time, hopefully, to enjoy real life. Yes. Um, So we wanted to share some things with you that you can do for free over the summer. Um, 
and, and some with with some uh cause, cause but hopefully not too much yeah. um one place well here's the thing even before we say that let me let me just say this so i i am learning how to um how to parent I'm learning how to parent. It was much easier before a kid for me to find something to do. I am I am learning that now I have to plan every little thing almost down to the detail. Um, every little thing. Like I need to, if I'm going without the kid, I need a babysitter. Like if I'm going with the kid, then I need to make sure it's obviously uh, kid friendly. Like, and although these things seem like things that are obvious, it's hard sometimes in making the switch into knowing exactly where to look for things to do because before, you know, I could just put in something online and just, you know, find a great place and I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. But with the kid, I have to sort of map it out. I need to see, like, okay, wait, what kind of crowd is this? Is this 21 and over? Like, although they say kids are allowed, like, what? You know what I mean? So hopefully some of these things will help you with trying to find something to do um, this summer with your family. And some of them are for both. Yes. Some There yes. are some that, you know, yes. have days specifically for family-friendly nights. Yes. Um, like the National Harbor. They have movies, free movies, right out on uh, – the main little the, when you plateau, first come, right, I think it's when called. You come down the stairs. I think it's called the plateau or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, they have free movies. They just released their free movie schedule. So on Thursdays, they call it date night. See, that's when you can take your honey and your boo and go have a nice little time at the harbor watching a movie. Igor helping me get right because I'm not right. Thank you, Igor. You're great. <laughs> <laughs> And then on Sundays is when they play more family-friendly movies. Yeah. Uh, so you can take the kids. You can go after church. You can hang out, get a little food. They actually allow you to, you know, bring your food in. Uh, you can buy food right there at the harbor and just have and, a fam and family day. And it's free. Day. And it's free. And it's free. That is, look, that is great fun, especially if you have a little kid. So, like, my seven-year-old, he has never done anything like that. So I'm sure just taking him down there to watch a movie, like would be out great. in the open with everybody. Exactly, and they have that little space where the kids can run and play even during the movie. Like that's great. That's great fun right there. And the drive-in, you told me about this one. The drive-in yes. at Union Market. So Union Market is where um, um, the shops used to be on Florida Ave. Um, right as you come over, uh, what is that? What is that? Fifty. 50 right where the Wendy's is. Yes. And it used to be the little shops right there, the wholesale shops. That's what I'm looking for. So Union Market is down there now, and they have some great stores. They have renovated down there, like, tremendously. And apparently now they have something where you can drive in, and they're playing movies. Like, who would who would, who would would have thunk it? I, I wouldn't have. And, and now with the drive-in, if you drive in, it's $15 per car. I did see that. Thank you. But if you are walk-up, it's still free. It's free, and look again. That's a perfect, a perfect outing out. So my dad has a, a ice cream spot down there. Uh -huh. He look. He was telling me about it. Apparently, the ice cream is the best ice cream this side of heaven. Apparently, like he was like pressed to tell me about it. So what I'm saying is, if that's something that you would like to do, whether it be date night with your kids, you can walk over there. It's free. Hit the ice cream shop watch the movie like that's that is a great cheap night now theirs is only once a month it's the okay. first it's the first friday of every month I perfect i saw that perfect um so but look at their schedules go online google google is your friend uh you can find all sorts of events all over the dmv if you just google mm -hmm. google free events in the district yes and yes. you would not believe how many things come up um there's that mac and cheese festival in Baltimore. That's all me. That is all me. Do you hear me? Let me tell you something. The mac and cheese festival, it's just nothing but macaroni and cheese. The fat girl in me was like, yes, Lord. And, yes. <laughs> because, look, so one of the things, so Laura mentioned Google. Um, Facebook is great for searching out events. 
too. Um, they are great at that. And that's actually how I found the Mac and Cheese Festival. And it's kid friendly. Um, they do say, you know, 21 and over preferred, but they do have things for like the kids to do. And that's only $45 for a general admission. But it's basically exactly what it says. They have all these different stations of macaroni and cheese, you know, for you to try. And of course, there's other things there and things to do. But the, the basis of it is mac and cheese. And if you missed the one this weekend, they have one in October in Arlington. Arlington, Arlington. See see how my fat girl researched all that out? I was, I'm prepared because if I miss Sunday, let me tell you something. In October, I think it's October 10th, I will be right at that mac and cheese festival. If y'all looking for me, that's where I'm going to be. <laughs> <laughs> And if you're not a movie buff, they, there are lots of places that offer free music, music concerts, um, the jazz festival mm -hmm. in June, uh, I believe it's June 14th through the 16th. Yes. That's a free jazz festival. At the Wharf. At yeah. the Wharf. Yes. Right in uh, D.C. at the Wharf. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say this one. You know, I love theater. Me too. As well. I love performances. And we have Aladdin coming into town. And shout out to my cousin, Bobby okay. Day, on, who is a part of Bobby. the cast of For Aladdin. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's a good one. And um, what, what's the other one that will be in town? Oh, the really good one, the great one. We did for the kid's birthday. The color purple? No. No. Oh. oh. I can't remember. Look, if Hadassah, Tashia, Elder Diane, Marcy, if any, Sharice, if y'all watching, please, Hamilton. Oh, Hamilton. See, let me tell you something. Hamilton is great. Hamilton will be in Baltimore in June, I believe. Um, hopefully tickets haven't sold out, but Hamilton is great too. So after you check out Cousin Bobby, make sure you get those Hamilton tickets because Hamilton is probably the best show that I've ever seen. I know. You made me want uh, regret missing it because you said how wonderful it was. Yeah, it's probably the best show I've ever seen. So that's definitely worth adding to your list. Definitely. definitely. And then the Smithsonian has lots of free things throughout the summer. So check out uh, the Smithsonian website. I believe it's www.siforsmithsonianinstitute.org. Okay. They have so much going on. They have... Um, a folklore festival, they have a music festival on the books. Um, and also the Capitol does US, uh, the US Capitol does concerts on the lawn, jazz concerts. Really? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. Hmm. So just research, find lots of things you can do. You can do some things for date nights, you can do some things with the kids. Just enjoy the summer. Look, enjoy the summer, but enjoy the moments. And look, take advantage of every moment that you have. Every moment, moment does not need to be about grinding, about hustling. Some moments are just for you. Some moments are just for your family. Some moments are just for the people that you care about, that you love. Like, take that extra step um, to go to the family cookout. Like, you can, you can leave the hustle one day to enjoy your family. Yeah, spend time. I mean, quality time is what people remember more. Exactly. Your kids will not remember, oh, daddy worked a lot. They'll remember that if they did, there's no balance between exactly. daddy worked a lot or mommy worked a lot and we did things. Exactly. Together. Exactly, and, that's, and again, I know that I keep bringing it up, but this is part of where my life is now. I'm learning balance. I'm learning balance. Like, look, Yes, I have to be at work or I need to be here or I need to be there, but I'm learning how to, okay, I have a free moment. Oh, nope, this is all about him. Okay, let me make a moment. So, okay, I have to be at, you know, Life of Books on Saturday morning, but he also has piano and swimming that day. Okay, well, I couldn't make that, so guess what? I'll pick you up. We'll go get ice cream. You'll tell me all about it. And he doesn't necessarily, he knows that I missed it, but he remembers that afterwards we went and did something and we talked about it and yeah. you know what I mean? So life is, life again is more than just the grind. It's just about being with the people you love sometimes. Yes. So make take the time. Take the time. Enjoy your family. Okay? Um, so I think we're going to take a, a little commercial mm -hmm. break. Yes, we are. And then when we come back, we will have the Miss, the phenomenal, excuse me, Miss Tiana Bruce.
Yes, I want to start off this moment um, with two things. First, I want to let y'all look at me. And you're looking at the host of the Lady Nikia Wright show. I'm going to have my own radio show starting every Thursday in April at 8 o'clock p.m. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I want to start off this moment um, with two things. First, I want to let y'all look at me, and you're looking at the host of the Lady Nakia Wright show. I'm going to have my own radio show starting every Thursday in April at 8 o'clock p.m. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to the Lady Nakia Wright show, A Life Reimagined. Oh. <laughs> this is what happens with live radio. That's all right. Well, I just want to uh, say I have the privilege of knowing this sassy and one of the most clever people I know uh, sitting next to me. She's an educator extraordinaire. Yes, like me. Like more. Like us, us together. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And she's a wordsmith who has like a poetic soul. And now she's an author. Yes. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I've known her probably for about at least 15 years. At least. At least probably 15 years. That? Probably more. <laughs> yep. She, she's also a fellow bowler like me. Hey. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. So please let me introduce Miss Tiana Bruce. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I think you did a great introduction. You probably should write all my introductions because it's really hard for me to talk about myself, <laughs> believe it or not. But um, like you said, I am an educator, high school, um, a little bit different than you? your little babies. All right now, I'm at my alma mater, Archbishop Carroll oh. in D.C. So wow. yes. Oh, Archbishop Carroll. Um, shout out to class of 2019. Those are my kids. They're graduating this You're an year. Advisor? No, no. I'm their English teacher, believe oh, okay. it or not. Okay. So day in, day out, they be learning. That's, oh, what, that's, right. that's what happens. And they all know, Miss Bruce, don't play. <laughs> that is true. Um, so in addition to that, um, doing some poetry. Um, they just opened up a bus boys over in my neighborhood. I live over in Anacostia, so I've been over there a couple of times. Up one. Yeah, I heard that. It's a I nice was space. Me too, but glad it's there. Nice community space. Uh, shout out to Slim Williams. He's one of the hosts and comedians, also a DC native who has returned to DC to work in okay. the neighborhood. Okay. Um, so that's pretty good. Doing some of that. Um, but for the most part, I have been working on this book. Like, like I said, it's like a brainchild for nine months, just plugging away, trying to get the poetry and um, the art inside the book and the arts also on my t-shirts did you do the artwork yourself uh, i took the pictures so okay. i'm not like that kind of artist but definitely able to find the finer points through a camera i've been trying to do that as well because sometimes you need that inspiration just take a picture write about it later and yes mm -hmm. and, and that's a, a lot of thing, things people don't know is that mm -hmm. your inspiration can come from anything you know anything in your environment Indeed, indeed. So that's what I've been been busy with, uh, Bruce Almighty's and Bruce Almighty herself. Yes. <laughs> kind of working on both of those. I call her Bruce Bruce. Yes. Hey, Bruce Bruce. <laughs> so as someone who's always enjoyed, because uh, you were an English major, right? Yes. Yes. Um, as someone who all obviously always enjoyed uh, writing mm -hmm. and uh, learning about writing and now teaching writing, um, what would you say was the moment when you realized 
that you want you loved being a writer, an actual writer? Um, that's actually funny. I was thinking about that on the way here because, and you use the term actual writer, and I think that didn't come for me until I actually was in high school. Okay. I used to write little stuff in middle school, um, like in a little composition book, and I would like pass it around to people, and they'd be like, "When you gonna write the next part?" So I kind of got in trouble for that because I was supposed to be learning everything else. So at one point, I had like bargained with my math teacher, like, can I just finish the math book so I could just write some stuff? And he was like, sure. He knew I was really going to do it. And I was like, write my little stuff out. So I've been bootlegging for a long time, all these stories and everything. But it wasn't until I got to Carol and I was in 11th grade. The summer before 11th grade, we had to read James Baldwin's book that they just made into a movie, If Bill Street Could Talk. Favorite thing. And I'm like, so you mean I can write about my experience as it is? In this raw way, and it can still be beautiful, that then that's what I'm gonna do. And and James Baldwin did a great job mm-hmm. of of helping people see the culture indeed of African Americans, you know, from a different perspective, not from the perspective of oh, I should say not from the negative perspective, but from the perspective of humanity. Mm-hmm. He did a great job with that. Indeed. And he made it plain without having to sanitize it. It wasn't that it was cleaned up or made pretty. It was just the way it was. And I think after that, you know, working and started getting published in high school in a literary magazine, started working for the newspaper, went to college, did the same thing, um, and graduated with that English and creative writing degree. So it took a while, you know, because, you know, being a writer, specifically one from a city that's vibrant like D.C., but also small and hard to kind of, figure out where you're supposed to be while you're trying to keep a roof over your head. It's been a journey. It's it's been a journey. It's been a journey. But, you know, if you keep plugging at it, it's going to pay. You keep plugging at it. It's going to pay her. I'm telling you all. (laughs) So when you all see this, when you find out where to get her book, you make sure you support her, please. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, um, Take me into your kind of creative process. Like, do you have, Mm. you know, some people, some writers say, oh, I have to have, uh, this playing on the TV or, you know, I have to have, a, you know, hopefully not, you know, not a drink. Right. You know, some people say I have to have, you know, some scotch on the side while I write. Right. What's your creative process? Um, it's, it's interesting. I'm not sure if I have been able to put my whole hand on it to bottle it because it just happens sometimes. Like, sometimes it's, well, I'm a huge hip-hop lover. I always listen to music. I like listening to the old stuff. I actually teach hip-hop, a hip-hop class, too. So when I talk to the kids and talking about the word helps me be able to produce it. Okay. So I find that when I put myself in places of music, I come home inspired. If I put myself in places of great company, you know, where there's stuff that's being talked about that asks the important questions, even if they're not the, the even if they're the hard questions, mm-hmm. um, I find myself inspired. I, sometimes I just go to busboys just to listen because okay. it's also helpful to be around other people who put so much on their art and their words. I mean... It's, it's a powerful thing, you know, being in the presence of that kind of energy. And I just usually come home and write. And it's funny because when I come home from bowling after league night, if I've had some good conversations, my teammates know I'm going to be up. So they're like, what, what did you write last did night? You write yeah, last did you write something? Yeah, did you write something? If we did win. I inspire you? Right, or if we lose real bad, I'm going to have emotion. <laughs> like, you know, I guess it's just that, that big burst of emotion. Like, when I actually feel like I have been in the presence of that human, that human thing, you know, because it was like y'all were talking about earlier. Yeah. Social media is so big, but it's not the only thing. No. And when we get that human spark, it just lights everything on fire for me. And I always found, because I do love poetry myself, I still write sometimes. Mm-hmm. I don't write as much as I used to, though. I got to get back to you it. You got to. I have to get back to it. Um, I even won a poetry slam in college one time. You never told me that. I didn't. It's been like 15 years, y'all. I don't even know how I didn't know that. No, you never told me that. Yep. And, and I had no intention of going. I had no intention of going. The only reason I went was because our professor said, if you go to this poetry <laughs> slam, I will excuse you from class today and we would get extra credit. So no, I went to the credit. poetry slam. And then when I got there, I just so happened to remember one of the things that I had written, went up and signed up right away and, and performed it in one. You I couldn't believe it. it. I couldn't believe it. I was surprised. That's a good but, thing. Um, I've always felt like uh, words and poetry um, are great ways to express express emotion. Indeed. You know, I use it a lot to to express the things I'm feeling inside. Mm-hmm. 
And so that's how, you know, it became my outlet. Absolutely. It, it does that. It, it, ha- it gives you no choice but to release in a very constructive way. Like, just let it out and then structure it later. And I guess that's one part of my creative process, too. I don't worry about it being pretty at first. I just get it out. Get it out. Fix it up later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, so you also sometimes go to Bus Boys and Boys and also perform. Yes. Um, I Do have... Do you have anything on the books coming up? No, not well. So I've been trying to keep my Thursday schedules. Like I used to go every third and fourth Thursday in Highsville. They have the biggest room. Okay. And then now that Anacostia is there, um, my friend Slim, he hosts over there on second Tuesdays. So I try to go there. I try to be a tourist of Bus Boys because it's a different vibe every single location. And different places. It's, it's a whole different vibe. Like the one on 14th Street has a completely different vibe um, than the one that's out in Sherlington. You know, you're in the city. It's like people are coming in. They have these high expectations. When you go to Sherlington, they're like, oh, let's see what art is there tonight. You know, so you like, I don't feel as pressured. Right. Um, right. But I try to be a tourist of there. So I, I'm not sure. I'm going to try to get around there, back into there. You Sherlington as your... Uh... Launch a pad. Yeah, that's the just, that's the one where I try out. some that's new stuff. It. I'm like, how y'all like this? <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Yes. Um, what would you like to say, you know, because I love to encourage kids, you mm-hmm. know, as being a teacher, everything always comes back to the youth. And what would you say to other inspire um, young artists well, to inspire them? That's actually a great question because I think that we actually need more young artists. It's not that young engineers or STEM careers aren't great but young artists keep it human so those young artists out there if you feel like nobody's gonna read your stuff or it's already too many writers maybe you won't get published or you won't get paid don't put that before your plans and your dreams it just because being a writer is something that's in you you can't get away from it you can be a ceo and still have the affinity to write you still won't feel complete it's one of those things i honestly feel like that's one of those Ways that you still feel honestly God's presence. It's because it's yours. Yeah. Nobody can do it like you. I mean, all divine inspiration comes from God. And, and artists are divinely inspired. inspired. I believe that. And even when they do the tough stuff. I think sometimes kids think that it has to be pretty, you know, or proper. Let's put it, let's use that word, that word that I don't like. Because proper is for a situation. If that's your situation and that's what you got to write about, write it. Because the more people know about it, the more it can be addressed, the more your poetry becomes something bigger. And there's nothing wrong with truth. Nope. There's nothing wrong with truth. Not at all. I think um, one of the big setbacks to the generation that I teach, so socially media dependent that they don't know about authenticity. It's all about your highlight reels. What word is that? Authenticity. Authenticity. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's so much more to life than your highlight reels. Yeah. People don't learn from your highlight reels. They learn from that one time that you felt real, real bad, and you weren't afraid to do it publicly, and you told somebody else about it. It could save somebody else's life. Yeah. That's when your art really takes root. That's what we talked about earlier, how your, your personal experiences, when shared, can become a shared experience that other people can learn and grow from. Absolutely. Uh, so the new book, let's talk about the new book. Okay. <laughs> so newly untitled newly untitled yes. um <laughs> it's now a good time can we play the teaser of her new book for us That still gets me a little bit. Yes, that still gets me a little untitled. bit. <laughs> so what's That's the story the, behind that name? Um, it's funny because I had to I had to write an intro to, to intro to the book to actually explain it. Mm-hmm. But like, so the way I explain it is that being newly untitled is like being newly divorced. Like you had all of these tags on you, titles on you, expectations, 
when you're newly divorced, you got to figure out what's going on from there. Like, I think I said, you know, do you just get a new bed or do you burn the whole house, house down? And I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but those are some of the questions you got to ask when you start over. When you're starting over. And I think being newly untitled for me is about me doing just what I told the kids to do. Let go of the expectations because I had a lot of them on me. You know, um, like I said, I went to Carroll, graduated at the top of my class, went to Loyola University in Baltimore. Nobody thought I was going to do that because who goes to that school? Mm -hmm. Then I went to my, I mean, first to do a whole bunch of stuff. So I think the success story that was written for me by others was, yeah, she'll grow up and she'll be great and she'll get a job and that's it. But the artist can't continue to star forever. So, first 20 years, I did what I had to do. And this next 20 years, I'm going to do what I want to do. Do what you want to do. So that's what it's I love about. It. I love it. Um, so, I know we're getting a little close on time and I want to talk about your t-shirt line. I didn't even know about the book at first. I wanted to share her for her t-shirt line, Bruce All My Tees. Yes. So, yes. And I love to play on words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I do. So um, Bruce All My Tees, I actually started the process about three years ago. But I just kept saying stuff. And all my kids, my, my students, my friends, why isn't that on a shirt? I don't know. So one day, my first shirt was actually this shirt right here. Let's see if I can show y'all. It's very apropos right now. I don't know if you can see that. But it says, gentrification ain't gentle. Gentrification ain't gentle. And it's because I kept saying it when I was talking about what was going on in neighborhoods like mine, where it's nothing wrong with new things coming up. But when the questions come up, you also have to be prepared for those, too. Like, can we have Starbucks and mumbo sauce? Like, why, why one got to go? Why, why, why <laughs> do we have to erase one culture? Right. To bring in another. To bring in things. So, you know, that was how it started. And Bruce Almighty's the little logo on the back, just so y'all can see that. Yay. That's actually a picture that one of my students drew when she was in the 11th grade. <laughs> and then she grew up to be a graphic designer. She's about 28 now, I believe. Wow. And she has her own business. And this was what she did for me. Aww. So that teaching, it also pays forward. I have brilliant kids. Yes. And I include them in almost everything I do. Well, so. you're brilliant. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> And, and I don't mean that just, or I'm not saying that just because, you know, she's a friend. She is truly a br brilliant person. Thank you. I appreciate that. Did so. you want to share maybe one oh, more? Sure. Um, let's see. Let me go back in here. I told you I'm a huge hip hop fan. So, like, this is one of my favorite little tanks I made for the ladies. It says, the most beautifulest thing in this world. And that's from Keith Murray's song. All y'all old heads who remember the good hip hop before it was like trap drums and mumble rap. <laughs> This, um, one of those things, I had made a whole line of those, like, I called them nerdy hip-hop interpretations, where it was, like, graphics for old-school hip-hop songs. I saw, I saw stuff. I did a t-shirt convention. They were pretty good. Yeah. They were pretty, like, liked them. So, you know, I had to figure out how to get my love for the word out there. And I think doing Bruce Almighty's first actually gave me the courage to put everything in the book together. Good, good. So, so um... As we come to the, you know, close of the show, can you share with everyone how they can get one of your teas or order a copy of your book? Yes, absolutely. So my website is www.itsritwrit.com. So everything, that's all of the things I do, um, from the consulting that I do and the coaching I do of other teachers to the poetry that I write and my blog, and of course, Bruce Almighty's the t-shirts. That's it's writ, which stands for words rich in texture. So, you know, that's what we're doing. <laughs> that's like we are excited. I'm so excited for you. Thank you. you. Just don't even know how excited. Thank I am you. For I you. appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. So we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and then Bruce Almighty, Miss Tiana Bruce, will read one of her yes, poems for one us. Of my poems. <laughs> Thank you.
Welcome back. Welcome back. Look, we about to just get this going. We have Tiana Bruce here. And she, look, if you have not, if you missed um, her interview, please go back, rewatch this. She is, she's great. Uh, you want to hear the things that she has to say. And you want to hear the things that she has for you. So with no further ado, we have the return with Miss Tiana Bruce. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so before I do this poem, in true teacher fashion, I have to give you a little bit of vocabulary. So um, a returning citizen, a returning citizen is um, a person who has been incarcerated and is just getting out of jail, either through a halfway house program or back on the block where more than likely they've been arrested. So this is for the city and all the returning citizens there, okay? Returning citizens. That's what they're called when they leave in handcuffs and return in ankle bracelets, looking like they never left, acting like they never will again. To assuage the guilt of not interrupting the school to prison pipeline, a returning citizens affairs office has been established. So my taxation without representation becomes pseudo reparations used to reacclimate those who prove the system works with a program that kind of admits it doesn't. We're missing the big picture, funny. When I was returning, I found no assistance with my readjustment. Because I left on my own accord, trunks, bags, and no handcuffs but student loans, I was presumed free. But since when isn't it a prison to be locked out instead of in? My orange jumpsuit, that mid-semester return for Thanksgiving dinner when my loved one said I was talking funny. My conviction, the assumption of arrogance that came with expressing my tuition as knowledge. My prison number, each class added a digit, my GPA became more important than my name. And after four years of transition, the flash of graduation pics snapped me back to a reality no longer comfy. My definition of home altered. No ruby slippers to click. Brain courage and heart and toe. I moved back to where I was before I knew me to start at the finish line. But where was my returning a different citizen's office? Where do we go when we're armed with perspective on quote unquote doing things the right way? Why isn't the first to graduate deemed as socially startling as the next to go to jail? We all come back institutionalized, filled with the dogma from inside, all needing an elixir to deal with the world we left, all wanting work, all wanting purpose, all connected. Caps and gowns become different shackles when we come home and find no place that recognizes our thirst for change. But the ones who made it, that's what we're called. Thank you. Yes! <laughs> come on here, T. Girl, <laughs> let me tell you, look, wait. <laughs> so what's your website again? <laughs> www.itswrit.com. Look, y'all make sure y'all go support. Um, maybe, look, maybe she'll start putting out when she goes to Busboy and Poets on her Indeed, website. I will. So I that will, way y'all can come out and support. <laughs> look, she's got it. So look, let's help. Let's do what we do. Let Look, let the community love up on her. This is what we do. We're going to keep making her and helping her be great. We're going to sell out some of these teas. We're going to get the book. We're going to sell that out. So she has to be forced to make another one. Look, <laughs> <laughs> look, no, that was great. Um, and as we wrap up, um, I just want to say thank you to our viewers. Thank you, Tiana, for coming out, thank you. sharing with us. Like, you are amazing. Um, and, and if I could leave any words of wisdom with you guys for the night, um, I'll go back to a previous thought. Sometimes it's okay to take a break from the grind, from the hustle, to share and be with your family, to be with the, the ones that you love, to make a difference and an impact in the hearts that you hold closest to yours. So um, as always, we look forward to seeing you next week and have a great and safe weekend. We're out.